Well, welcome everyone. It's Dr. Ron Henning Hockey. I'm the Chief Medical Officer here at Reardon Clinic. And I have uh, Dr. Dustin Moffat from our Hayes uh, Division uh, here to, this, today to, to talk about a topic which uh, probably most people have wondered about, and but we, we've never really maybe gotten the full story. And what we're, what we're discussing here is uh, what is responsible for a healthy thyroid. So Dr. Moffat, what's your background in thyroid and why is this a, an interesting topic for you? Well, being a naturopathic doctor, we, we learn quite a bit about what all the, the thyroid does for us. Um, the, I've gone kind of a little bit above and beyond here, and I've gotten uh, certified in T3 therapy and even thyroid therapy uh, that kind of goes a little above and beyond what medical school taught us. I've also done um, advanced training with functional medicine um, learning everything that the thyroid entails. Um, so our, our thyroid is responsible for a large number of things. Uh, it can be our immune system. It can be our thermogenesis, which means our heat production, um, which inevitably can control our metabolism. So if we've got a over-functioning thyroid, we can have too high of a metabolism. If we have an under-functioning thyroid, we can have too low of a metabolism and see weight gain with that which can be a common sign of it. Um, low, low motivation, fatigue, dry skin, brittle hair, um, some anxiety or moodiness, especially in younger individuals. I see that quite frequently um, in younger ladies or even um, more mature ladies. We can see irregular periods or abnormal um, menstrual cycles. Uh, insomnia can, can be a problem with with thyroid as well? You know, uh, I think they say it's that fatigue is the most common uh, symptom that uh, patients will go to their doctors with. And uh, I know doctors do uh, standard thyroid tests, like a thyroid stimulating hormone on people, but oftentimes that comes back normal. And yet the patient will have classic symptoms of low thyroid, but yet uh, oftentimes there, what's, there's, there's no, there's no, uh, and there's no way to treat that with thyroid or is there, what's, what's your understanding of why thyroid problems often go undiagnosed? Because I, I don't quite understand why the trend became to just look at TSH. Um, especially the longer I've been in clinical practice, I just see so many abnormalities after TSH, um, even though TSH is quote unquote normal range. Um, so here at the Reardon Clinic, we look at TSH, we look at free T4, which is a blood storage marker, free T3, which is more of an activated thyroid hormone. And then we'll even do a reverse T3, which can be a regulatory hormone or a trash hormone or inflammatory hormone. Um, and then in some patients, we'll even look at thyroid antibodies. So really taking a good approach at all of those together can give a much better picture of what's going on with the thyroid. So if somebody has a normal TSH, yet their free T4 or free T3 are super low, that's going to explain their symptoms. And that would have been missed if we had just run TSH. Just to go back for a second, the thyroid stimulating hormone is uh, made by the pituitary and it's actually... Uh, part of the, the brain, the hypothalamus's regulation of metabolism and thyroid functioning in the body. So it's a signaling hormone from the brain to the, uh, to the gland in, 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 in people's throats. And so, so conventional thinking is, is that all, that's all you really need to know is the TSH high, is the TSH low. But what you're saying is, is that uh, trying, trying to look at a broader perspective of the various facets of how thyroid functions within the body may show uh, more problems that would explain why oftentimes people don't get diagnosed with a thyroid disorder. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's not just the thyroid that would be involved. We can do more specific testing to, to see why there's a low thyroid condition. Um, so in my practice, I've seen, uh, obviously, 
hormonal issues can be a big part of uh, thyroid issues, but we also see toxic buildup, um, whether it be chemical toxicity or heavy metal toxicity um, can cause that. We've seen chronic viral infections lead to development of thyroid conditions. Um, there are nutrient deficiencies. So a uh, big one can often be obviously iodine um, being deficiency, but also vitamin A is a very important vitamin that's used in the conversion of that blood storage T4 to T3. So what, what, what we're seeing here is more this, the concept of functional medicine that when there is a problem with the thyroid, it's just not an issue of what, that you're lacking thyroid hormone, that, that maybe there are nutritional factors or toxicity factors or autoimmune factors that are contributing to the, to the dysfunction of the thyroid. So it's not just a matter of throwing thyroid hormone at people, but actually trying to look for the deeper causes and try to make some corrections in that area. Uh -huh. And another one that, another two major things that we see would be stress and lack of sleep, right? Oh yeah. So big stress big. is a big thyroid killer. And then of course, if, if you're not sleeping well, um, our body doesn't recharge. Just like we recharge our cell phones, we just get depleted. And therefore it's almost impossible for our body to operate as optimally as it should. Yeah. So, so this is a common problem and, uh, what would you, how would you kind of uh, go about this kind of evaluation there at the Reardon Clinic in Hayes? So we will see the, the patient come in and do your preliminary intake and um, look at dietary lifestyle factors that may be underlying. Uh, but then what we'll do is order a set of labs. Typically speaking, it's a thyroid lab. Um, which is that TSH, free T4, free T3, and reverse T3. We may go beyond that and look at some other things. Um, if I'm suspecting there may be underlying general metabolic issues, I'll usually run a CBC, CMP, which are typical screening labs. Um, just kind of look there. Once we've gotten those back, we may do even more specific testing like the uh, heavy metals test or chemical toxicity or thyroid antibodies. Um, but every patient is individual. So I don't do a cookie cutter. Um, everybody gets treated the same. So I try to individualize it to what their history tells me. So whether or not they maybe worked in a metal factory and have toxic exposure that way, or maybe they work 85 hours a week and are chronically stressed. Sometimes uh, figuring out how to deal with that stress. And sometimes if we can't figure out how to eliminate stress, we can help modify the body to reduce how it feels about that stress and able to kind of let it slide off the shoulders a little bit better. Um, obviously finding a way to reduce stress and get better sleep and a little bit of exercise and maybe a great diet, um, those can go a long way too. So, Assuming you do all that and the patient begins to make modifications in their lifestyle, but they still have a thyroid problem where they lack thyroid hormone, do you just prescribe the synthetic thyroid or are, are you uh, using natural thyroid as well? And, and what is the difference and is one better than the other? That is a tricky question. So I do prescribe all kinds of different thyroid medications as needed. Standard of care does say that levothyroxin or Synthroid, which are synthetic T4s, are the, the first line of action for treatment. That being said, some people just don't do well with those synthetic ones. Um, do they work really well for some people? Absolutely. They, they've done really well in some pa patients. Um, and here lately, I've been seeing a lot of patients convert back and forth just because of either availability or pricing issues or insurance coverage and everything else of that sort. But the synthetic ones just don't cut it in everybody. And sometimes, especially in Hashimoto's, which is the most common hypothyroid autoimmune condition, they just don't do well with that synthetic T4. Um, so they tend to do better with desiccated or natural thyroid hormone um, that is either from 
pig or, or cow, just depending on the supplier. Um, but armor or NP thyroid are probably the two most common that we'll hear of. There's also nature throid, west throid. Um, there can be some compounded ones. There, there's just all different varieties. But typically speaking, NP thyroid or armor are the, the most common. Okay, well, I think, I think that's probably enough information for today. Uh, how can people get a hold of you up in Hayes if they have an interest in looking into thyroid as a possible cause of their symptoms? So our number here in Hayes is 785-628-3215. And the standard number for all clinic locations is one 800 Four four seven seven two seven six, and also you can the Reardon website website ReardonClinic.org is a good way to kind of get to know more about this. And we have a number of uh, thyroid lectures that are available on YouTube, and I believe there are some on our website as well. All right, Dr. Moffat, thank you once again for an enlightening discussion on. Uh, different ways of approaching thyroid disorders. Thanks again. Thank you.